Okay, so this is for regular Algebra 1, first period, ninth period. Uh, today is 319. And we're going to start the second part of quadratics unit. So that first part was standard form. How do you graph from standard form? How do you find all the information from standard form? We found vertex, axis symmetry, y-intercept. Found a bunch of information, but there's one key bit of information we didn't find. One of the key parts of a graph is the x-intercepts. So we didn't find the x-intercepts from standard form. Uh, quick reminder about the x-intercept. x-intercepts are also sometimes called solutions or roots or zeros. They're all kind of used. They all mean slightly different things, but they're pretty much used interchangeably. Well, what is an x-intercept? It's where it crosses the x-axis, obviously. But what does it really mean mathematically? Mathematically, it's going to be the solutions to the standard form equation when it equals zero. Okay. So it's the solutions of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Okay. Because the one thing all x-intercepts have in common is it's when the y value is zero. All right, well, that's a quadratic equation, and the only way we could solve quadratic equations is through everyone's favorite technique, which is factoring. Okay, so again, I said factoring was important, and I said it would come back again, and here it is. To solve that equation, we're going to have to factor and solve using the zero product property. Now, I know some of us are still a little shaky on factoring. I do have a lot of older videos about factoring. Uh, if you want to look at those or look at your old notes or you know, however you want to figure it out at this point. Uh, before we talk about finding the x-intercepts, we're going to talk about how many the types of different x types of different solutions we could have. And this all has to do with the shape of a parabola. Okay. The most common one that we're going to have, and this was the most common one when we were solving quadratics, is you'd end up with two real solutions. Okay. So all this means is that your parabola is going to cross the x-axis two times. Okay. Now again, when we were factoring quadratics, normally we got two binomial factors, and we'd set each one equal to zero, and you'd end up with two solutions. Okay. It's the same thing here. Most parabolas are going to cross the x-axis in two places. Okay. So this one crosses once, crosses twice. Those are both x-intercepts. Scenario two is it's possible to only have one real solution or one x-intercept. So how can you have a shape like a parabola but only crosses the x-axis once? Okay. You know, it's hard to think about because it's symmetric, so it means anything, if it crosses on one side, it's automatically going to cross on the other side. So the only way that this could happen is if the vertex is on the x-axis. So if your vertex is sitting on the x-axis, it's only going to cross there one time. Okay. 
So that's how you get one real solution. All right, and then the last scenario is you could have no solutions or no real solutions. So that means your parabola wouldn't cross at all. All right, and the scenario for that is it's going to occur whenever your vertex is either above the x-axis and it opens up or it's below the x-axis and it opens down. So you could have, it's possible to have your entire parabola above the x-axis. And if the entire thing's above the x-axis, it's obviously not going to cross the x-axis. Or on the other side, you could have it going down. You could have it below, the, the entire thing below the x-axis. So you could have two real solutions where it crosses twice. You could have one real solution, which means the vertex is on the x-axis. Or you could have no real solutions, meaning the vertex is above the axis and opens up, or it's below the axis and opens down. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do an example of finding the x-intercepts. Let's do it with the equation f of x equals... 2x squared minus 5x oops, minus 3. Uh, and let's find some information. Let's find the opening. Let's find the y-intercept. I'm going to skip the axis of symmetry and the vertex because this one ends up in fractions. Uh, and then lastly, we'll find the new stuff, the x-intercepts. All right, the opening. Now remember, the opening only depends on the a value. Our a value is 2, positive 2, so it means it's going to open up. Because the a value is greater than, it's positive, greater than 0. The y-intercept, recall from the last lesson, that the y-intercept is always the c-value. So our y-intercept is going to be negative 3, because c equals negative 3. All right, and then the new stuff. How do we find that x-intercepts? Well, the x-intercepts are going to be the solution to the equation 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 equals 0. And again, we can't solve that as a quadratic. So what we have to do is we have to factor. Now this is one of the harder factors. It's one where you have to, you know, guess and check, basically. Okay. Now this one's an easier version because, again, we know that the first two values have to multiply to 2x squared. And the only thing that multiplies the 2x squared is 2x and x. And we also know that the last term in each binomial has to multiply to negative 3. The only thing that multiplies the 3 is 1 and 3. Okay. So it's either going to be 1 and 3, 3 and 1. One's going to be negative, one's going to be positive. So just guess. Let's say it's, I we'll guess, negative 1 and positive 3. Okay. If you do a quick inside-outside multiplication, the inside gives you negative 1x, the outside gives you positive 6x. If you add those together, you get positive 5x. Okay. We need negative 5x, so what that means is we're just going to flip the signs. We're going to make that plus 1, and we'll make this one minus 1. Okay. And that gives us positive 1 and negative 6, which gives us a negative 5. Right, so that's the right guess. All right, so now that it's factored, how do we find that x-intercepts? Well, we're going to use the zero product property. 
We're going to take each one of those factors separately. Set it equal to zero. And solve for x. That first one, two-step equation, subtract one, divide by two. And you get x equals negative one half. That's x intercept number one, that's solution number one. The set other side, x minus three equals zero, one step equation, add three to both sides. So your second x intercept is x equals three. Okay. So your x intercepts are negative one half and positive three.